What's up everybody? Finally, we got to the end of the test and this is the last question for the test. So we have to graph f of x equals negative 4 over 3x minus 6 plus 1. And then we're going to have to state a few characteristics for this function. So first thing to recognize, this x is in the denominator. So we know the parent function we're dealing with is 1 over x. And then what's going to happen is we're going to transform this function 1 over x into this. And then we can graph it. So we're going to take this table of values and then we're going to use the mapping formula and get our new table of values. Now, in general, when you transform y equals 1 over x, you may want to write this down. The function generally is going to look like a over k bracket x minus d plus c. Notice how this function is very close to this format except for this denominator. Notice how in this case there's nothing attached to the x. This one has this 3 attached to the x. So let's take this function and rewrite it in this format. So we'd still have the negative 4 up top, but we would factor out a 3 in the denominator and then we'd have x minus 2, and this would be plus 1. And now notice how we can match up all of the transformation values. So we can tell the a value is negative 4, k value is 3, uh, the d value is 2, and then the c value is 1. So you may want to write this general transformation format down for 1 over x. It's not as intuitive as the other parent functions. But when you transform 1 over x, it should always be in this format. So the next step now that we have the transformation values is we're going to take the table for 1 over x, which is here. This function, if you remember, it looks like this. So there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0, and there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Hence why this coordinate at an x value of 0, y values are undefined. This represents the vertical asymptote there. So we're going to take these coordinates, and then we're going to map them with these transformation values. And if you remember, the general formula is x over k plus d a y plus c. So in this case, we're going to take the x values, divide them by the k value of 3, and then add 2, that d value of 2. a y plus c, so we're going to have negative 4y plus 1. Now when we transform these x values, we're going to get some pretty ugly numbers here. We're going to get some decimal numbers. But that's okay. So we're going to take negative 2 divided by 3 and then add 2. And that would give us something like 1.3, right? 1.333 repeating. Let's just round it to one decimal place. Negative 1 divided by 3 plus 2 would give us 1.7. And then if you follow that same pattern for the rest of the x values, you would get these values here if you round to one decimal place. <clears throat> now, what about the y values? So we got this y value negative a half. Negative a half times negative 4 gives us positive 2 plus 1 gives us 3. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4 plus 1 gives us 5. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8 plus 1 gives us 9. This undefined stays as undefined. And then uh, 2 times negative 4 plus 1, that would give us negative 8 plus 1 would give us negative 7. 1 times negative 4 plus 1 would give us negative 3. And then 1 half times negative 4 is um, negative 2 plus 1 gives us negative 1. And now we have a table of values for this function. So now that we have the table, we can graph the function by plotting these points. 
Now, one thing I want to mention specifically when you're working with reciprocal functions, when you're working with transform reciprocal functions, I kept the transformation values here, the A, K, D, and C, because I want to make a quick remark. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in the lecture videos. But when you're dealing with the parent function 1 over x, like we are in this case, and then you're transforming it, the d value is always going to represent the vertical asymptote. And then the c value is going to represent the horizontal asymptote. And that is good information to have because it's going to allow us to see more clearly how these points are going to look on the graph. Right? And this makes sense because if you remember the parent function 1 over x, it has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Well, what does the d value mean? It means that we're taking a function and we're shifting it by two units to the right. So if we take this parent function, shift it two units to the right, well then the new vertical asymptote is going to be at an x value of 2. Right? And we could also see that with the table of values because at this x value of 2 we have undefined y values, meaning that's a vertical asymptote there. But you should just remember that the d value of a transform reciprocal function is always going to be the vertical asymptote. So the new vertical asymptote now is going to be at x is equal to 2. And then for the parent function 1 over x, the horizontal asymptote is y, uh, it's at y is equal to 0, and we're shifting it up by 1. So now the new horizontal asymptote is going to be at this y value of 1. Hence why I mention the c value of a transform reciprocal function always represents the horizontal asymptote. And when you're graphing a transformed um, reciprocal function, I highly recommend that you draw these asymptotes first. So let's draw this vertical asymptote here as a dotted line, x is equal to 2. And let's draw the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. And now let's plot these points. And now these points should make a little bit more sense on this graph. So 1.3 and 3, that's going to be like somewhere here. 1.7 and 5, maybe here. Then 1.8 and 9 is here. So this portion of the graph is going to look something like this. There's actually no reason why I made this so long here. It does keep going like that, but it's just not going to look as pretty. All right, so we got these three coordinates that I plotted here. This is not to scale, by the way. I'm just uh, roughly drawing it. 2.2 and negative 7 is... Um, like over here, 2.3 and negative 3, let's say, is maybe here. And then 2.7 and negative 1 is maybe like here. So this graph is going to look something like that, that portion of it. OK, so that's how this function looks like. So whenever you're dealing with reciprocal functions, I'd highly recommend, and you're graphing them, I'd highly recommend drawing out first the vertical and the horizontal asymptote and that's just simply the d and the c values and then taking your points plotting them and then you can see more clearly how the shape of the graph is going to look like and then before finishing off there are a couple of characteristics that this question asks us about this graph they ask us for the equation of the asymptotes, and we already know the equation of the vertical asymptote is x is equal to 2, and the um, equation of the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1. It also asks us about the symmetry 
of the graph. Symmetry means is the graph or the function odd, even, or neither. Well, an even function we can tell from the graph uh, has to be symmetrical about the y-axis. This graph is definitely not symmetrical about the y-axis, so it's not even. And then an odd function is rotationally symmetrical about the origin. Or if we reflect it in the y-axis and the x-axis, we end up getting the same function. Notice that that wouldn't happen if we do that with this function. So we know the symmetry, the function is neither odd or even. So that's what they're asking for when they're asking for the symmetry. The answer is always either even, odd, or neither. And then they also ask us about the Um, the end behavior. So the end behavior as x goes towards positive infinity and as x goes towards negative infinity, what's happening? Well, as x is going towards positive infinity, what's happening? The y values are going towards this value of 1. They're never going to hit that y value 1, but they are approaching it. And if you want to be a little bit more specific, you can say from below. So they're approaching that y value of 1 from below that y value. And then as x approaches negative infinity, what's happening? The y values are approaching 1 as well, but they're approaching it from above. So the end behavior of a reciprocal function is always going to, the y values are always going to approach that horizontal asymptote. Whether it's coming from below or from above, that depends on whether it's been reflected um, in the x-axis and the y-axis, etc. You can see it from the graph. But uh, a lot of teachers don't even want this part from below or from above. I just put it just in case so you can better understand the uh, end behavior description. But the y values uh, for the end behavior are always going to approach that horizontal asymptote value. In this case it was 1 so they're both approaching 1 as x goes towards positive infinity and negative infinity. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.